the post and then out he goes, Bollers up. It is a long, winless run for the Addicts. 15 league matches in total. It is, in fact, the longest current run in English football. But today, a familiar foe comes to town. Yes, that's right. It is Portsmouth who visit the Valley and John Massinho's side are top of the table. They've also won the last four league matches. Whatever has been happening at Charlton over the last few years, though, to one constant, we tend to get a good result against Portsmouth. A history between the two sides, a sold-out away end and a home support encouraged by last weekend's draw at Bolton. It sets us up for a fascinating afternoon. Less than 45 minutes until kick-off. Let's take a look at what we've got coming up. We'll hear from Nathan Jones, who spoke to Charlton TV earlier this week. Thierry Small talks us through his impressive debut and that goal last weekend. And we'll take a more in-depth look at Charlton's record against Portsmouth. Yes, a warm welcome to everybody outside the UK, all around the world. Remember to watch the Charlton's game against Portsmouth today, just £10. So please, if you haven't already... Uh, try and purchase that right now. Curbs and Brownie alongside me. And uh, look, Curbs, Charlton versus Portsmouth. What yeah. comes to mind? Well, obviously the first game back here at the Valley. And, um, you know, Jimmy Smith, my old manager at Birmingham, was the manager of Portsmouth at the time. And uh, as he said after the game, we was never going to win it. <laughs> he said we was never going to win it. And um, he was right. I think the old day was, was, was fantastic. We, um, we came back home, if you like. And it was the start of the, of the big recovery. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to play in that game. And I personally still put that as in the top five of games of my career. Probably, what was it, 8,000 fans at a time? We I were think, in Porter yeah. cabins and, yeah. and dressing. But This was condemned. This side was yeah. con condemned, wasn't it? Wouldn't have been called the Alan Kerbishy stand no. then, would it? No, we had golf, golf stands over there, didn't we? And, uh, you know, temporary golf stands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but and the Porter cabins, you're right. And it was an interesting day because we put gritty in the side. <laughs> and Jock Pardew, Alan Pardew, who was really angry. Well, he? was really angry, wasn't he? He's, he's still bitter about it. He's still bitter about it. Every time I see him, uh, he mentions it. Uh, but no, uh, we made a couple of changes, got the result. Yeah, absolutely. Um, massive game, considering what it meant to this club. Uh, a special one, isn't it? It is an, an iconic match, Charlton Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's based on that, isn't it? I don't, I don't remember too much about that fixture before that day. But from that day onwards, I mean, it's, it, it has sort of held a special play, place in Charlton fans' hearts, for sure. Um, yeah, and we've got a very good head-to-head -head record. You know, I wonder if that had anything to do with it. That was a, I'd like to see the results before well, that fixture. We, we will come on a little bit later on as to, to the head-to-head yeah. -head -head record, which might surprise you, actually, but that's a little bit later. Look, Curbs, we talk about how it's a big, iconic game, but actually it's a big game for this present Charlton side, isn't it? When, when you think I was sort of almost doing the old teletext, looking at Cheltenham and Wigan last night, or Wigan yeah. Cheltenham, and, and at half-time, we were in the drop zone. Yeah, yeah. Wigan got the draw, and in the end, we're, we're, we're just out of it at the moment, but we're, we're far too close to that dotted line, you, aren't you we? often hear managers say, oh, we'll just take one game as it goes and as it comes, etc. Let's be honest, we've got two really tough games coming up. Um, this one today and Derby away. Uh, and if it don't go well for us, we could quite conceivably be in the bottom, in the relegation mm. places. Um, yeah, so I just hope today, Portsmouth have sold their end out. I'll keep on about it, but a decent atmosphere. I hope we respond, you know, and the players go out and it's, and it's a proper game, if you like. And um, if they do anything good, it'd be a big cheer. And if they do anything bad, then, you know, get on with it. But I just think today, one or two have got to step up. We need to get a result. Um, and as I say, the consequences, if we don't, with the next two matches, uh, we could be not just looking over our shoulders, we could be in it. Absolutely, it could be by the end of the day. Let's speak hypothetically, shall we, um, Brad? <laughs> Why do you look like that? You know what hypothetically means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a long word for me. <laughs> I had to break it down into syllables. And I'm then work in it another out. one then, cool. and that will be it for the day, trust me. Uh, psychologically, <laughs> yeah. what, what would it have meant if Cheltenham had a one and we'd be kicking off in the drop zone? 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure it makes a great deal of difference. If I'm honest with you, that one position. I mean, the, the, you know, the issues lie are far deeper than than that one result last night. I, I don't think it would make any difference to me personally as a player if I was sat at home last night and I was walking into the dressing room today. I know the job I've got to do. I'd still be encouraged by last week's performance. I'd feel. I'm guessing this, but I. I I would I'd feel like there's a better atmosphere around the training ground, the performance. Like we've steadily got better since Nathan's come in. The Reading one was disappointing. Um, the Lincoln game, we were strong second half, and Bolton, I thought that was a good performance. So I'd be a bit buoyed by that. And I'd try and forget that. It's not easy to forget it, but you try and forget that and look at what's in front of you today. Um, and I would, like I said, I, if, if you did have bogey sides. You had bogey sides, and you had sides that you were good at beating. And, and I'd, I'd be focusing on that, I think. I don't know how much Nathan knows about that. I'm sure it would have been pointed out to him. But oh, it definitely would have been pointed out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, as a player, ignore that. You know, I've got a job on my hands here. We've got, what is there, 13 games to go, and there's some winnable games. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we won't pick up anything out of the next two either. I know it's a tough run of fixtures from last week to next week, but um, I think there's a, there's a point or two to be grabbed here along the way. And yeah. then, then we go into the fixtures that I think we can win. I, I didn't think we'd get a point before the game against Bolton. The performance certainly deserved that as well. But from a managerial point of view, Curbs, do you, you know, the fact we've got a good recent record against Portsmouth, do you play in that at all or, 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 uh, not, or not? No, I don't, I don't think it's going to count for too much, really. I'm just, as I say, I'm just pleased that the performance last week against another top side and, and the atmosphere here today, and uh, I'm hoping that our team responds to it because it does make a difference, you know that. You know, playing in front of an half-empty stadium, you can hear all the negativity when something goes wrong. I think as a player, you tend to play safe instead of like, perhaps trying to express yourself, and I just hope we go out and express ourselves today. Uh, you talk about we've got a good record against Portsmouth. I don't think we ever had such a gap between us at 19 places and 39 points. Yeah, that's more points than we've got, isn't it? This is, yes. Yeah, so the gap between us is more points than we've managed to put on the board. And that's where the problem lies, Scotty. One away win all season. You know, and even our home form's deserted us. So, you know, Curve speaks about making the Valley your fortress. And I thought we did a good job of that, but we've slipped. And I, I don't know what it is exactly. I think four losses in the last five or something here at the Valley. So that's something we've got to address, you know, from now to the end of the season, whilst picking up a, a, an away win or two. Um, which I, th I think we're going to do, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm the half-glass empty guy, but I actually think we're all OK. I don't know if that's my heart ruling my head, but I think that I, th I look at the fixtures ahead, I look at the other teams in the bottom half of the table, and I, I, I think we're going to be OK. You're not glass half empty. It's realistic, <laughs> Brown. Really it's realistic. Just think as well, there's a couple of teams behind us who've got games in hand, which I don't think's right. Shouldn't be going into a run-in. I don't think that should be allowed. I think they should be forced to play them games, so everyone's on an even kill. Um, I'm not sure about the fixtures this week. They must be, some of these teams uh, will be playing, obviously, but then the following week, let's hope they get them games in hand out of the way. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, in terms of what we've seen, and you sort of nailed it there, when it, the Reading game was poor, mm. the, the second half against Lincoln was better, especially yeah. when Chucks came on. And again, we're having options. Do you feel, I mean, Kerbs, I'll throw this one to you. Do, do, do you feel there is much more of a, a positivity yeah, around the place? Yeah, to see what the team is today when it's announced. Um, the big thing is obviously Alfie May. Um, he's, he's back. Oh, he's back. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm just thinking, you know, I think Nathan's come in and perhaps said to one or two of them, you know, this is the way I'm going to do it. You, you, you're my captain, you're my top scorer, but if I don't fancy that you can do the job for me on that day, then I'm going to, you know, and I think what he did to Alfie, leaving him out, he's now said, I can do that to anyone. You know, my top goal scorer and captain, I'm leaving you out. And for whatever reason he done it, he's still done it. So I think he's, he's said to the players, if you perform... Do you, think you that was a, do you think that was an intentional message to the group to say no, that I, just, I, just, I can drop your top scorer yeah, and... I, no, I just think, I think Alfie probably needed a rest. He's been up there on his own, he's been foraging around, and he's been so honest, as we know, chasing back, getting involved in silly tackles and whatever. So I think perhaps, perhaps the rest, hopefully, we'll see today, the mm -hmm. rest has done him some good. OK, uh, let's hear from Nathan Jones right now, shall we? We spoke to Charlton TV a little earlier this week. Uh, three games in and almost three weeks since it took over. Obviously, it's, um, it's only a short time, but performances game on game have improved. Uh, you might not have got the win you were after, obviously, but um, 
Would you say you got the reaction from the players that you also said you are? Oh, absolutely. And on a day to day basis, you know, I can see that they're, they're a real, real good, honest group. It's been a group that's short on confidence and, and stuff. But, you know, it, 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 I would expect, you know, if, if I'm doing my job in any, in any, to any level, that performances would improve week in, week out. And yet, oppositions differ. So, you know, you have tougher opposition sometimes than others. But in terms of the structure and what we do, yeah, well, look, we've, we've seen a big difference and, and players have been excellent, bought into everything. They work so hard. There's an honesty. And if you've got honesty, then you've, you've got a real chance. One thing you have done is you've lost your squad uh, since you've been here, bringing in players to, to the starting eleven or perhaps on the periphery. Before, uh, and resting players who fans at least might think should be first names on the team sheet. Um, does that reflect the, the rigours of the fixture list or is it more a case of just picking players who are in form and, and uh, impress you in training? It's a bit of everything, really. But um, look, we pick a side to win a game and you, you, you won't just pick the same 11 week in, week out. I'm finding out a lot about the players and what I can demand from them and how I can play with certain players. And, and that's all we can do. But it's, you know, we've, it's, it's a big squad, so it's, you know, it's, it's too big. We'll, we'll cut this down in, you know, in, in, in the coming sort of months and, and, and moving forward because what we want to do is, is streamline, have a real competitive squad that's hungry, that's talented. At the minute, it's slightly too big in terms of numbers. But... In terms of me finding out about everyone, that's that's one of the first things. And then tactically, we have to put a side out there that can that can perform and and play. Now, you know, some people are coming back from injury and can't can't play that. Some people pick up certain things. So I pick a team on with with as much information as I can. I don't I don't rotate. I'm not a tinker one. I'd rather if I could play eleven players and make the same substitutions and win every game, then be brilliant. But that don't happen. Three back into couldn't play through through illness, um, and you mentioned that uh, Panish Kamara was also carrying a knock uh, before the last game. How are they both? Are they both okay now? And, and, uh, yeah, look, Tariq Tariq was ill, so he, he you know we cleared cleared him out of the place because regardless if he recovered quickly or not, he could you know obviously contaminate others. So we took precautions with that, and then. Um, uh, and then Panucci picked up a knock in training um, on the Thursday. He travelled with us, obviously played some part in the game, but mm. but meant he could probably use a risk to start him. So so look, yeah, they they're in better position than they were a week ago. Um, and as as is everyone, everyone's sort of gathering that little bit of momentum. We're demanding from them in in different ways, not anything better or than previous, but we demand from them in different ways. So that takes some time as well. And Kane Ramsey, of course, um, uh, you mentioned last week it might be slightly more serious than we first feared. Do we have an update on, on Kane? Yeah, Kane's, Kane's a little bit longer. You know, Kane's going to be... Uh, he has a hamstring hamstring issue, a hamstring tendon issue, which, again, can be any time scale. So I won't put a time scale on it, but it's it's going to keep him out of, of you know the foreseeable future in terms of our next sort of three to four games. Uh, there was a lot made of the three-game run that we're now in the middle of, um, starting um, with Bolton, of course. Does that performance against Bolton show that, uh, regardless of the opposition, it's almost irrelevant if we can put in that level of performance everywhere? Look, the, we have to respect every opposition because everyone's a different test. Like Bolton's one of the best tactical tests you'll have in terms of structure, in terms of how they play, because they're well-drilled, well-coached, have real continuity, been together for a while, have come up through through League Two and done very well and, and keep doing well and keep improving. So that was as tough a test as there's going to be, away is best record. So it shows we can compete, but we can't, can't be fearful of, of anyone. And we, we give everyone respect, but we also think, well, OK, how can we implement our style or our on, on them and wh where can we exploit those? And that's, that's the mentality that we have to instil in them because it's not there yet, but it will be. Speaking of mentality, I was mentioning our comments that... I think prior to your arrival, probably would have looked at that game and, and thought we need to score three ga three goals to get a point. But does the mentality change, or has the mentality changed? So we're looking at it from another perspective in in terms of it's Bolton that needed to get three goals to to secure a point. Yeah, but we can't concede three goals. I'm I'm you know I, I was pleased with so much of the performance, but a lot of the performance has to improve, and, and we have to improve because that's just us. That's not not taking Bolton out of the equation, but conceding the goals in certain manners that we did, that can't happen because that's bad defending, for example, or certain things in the game I would have liked us to have done slightly better to make us a better side, regardless of who we play against, because that's us moving forward now. What was pleasing was, one, the character to come that, that we showed we didn't go under, two, we took the lead twice and, and, thing, and you know, had a chance to win it later on, so it shows that we're not content. We're not going to contain teams. What we're going to do is we're going to try and be aggressive against everyone. Now we're, I was two weeks into our 
you know, start of, of, of something. And I thought we were really aggressive against the best side in, in the league. So that's only going to get better. 13 games to go, six of those are at the Valley. Do you put a points requirement in your head to that or is it just a case of taking them? One no, we've 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 got to stop picking up wins. Is is what we do. We have got you know a tough tough run of fixtures for different for different reasons. We've got three away games, which is, seems crazy, and obviously playing Bolton, Pompey, and, and Derby, no one could envisage that they'd be the top three, for example. Well, you could, but um, that that's nothing to do with that. But then three away fixtures on the spin, that's you know that's tough. So you know we're we're up against it in terms of in terms of from an outside perspective, but. These are games that we've got to take as many points as we can from. Games against Portsmouth uh, that we have on, on Saturday usually bring goals uh, and a good crowd to the Valley. Uh, it could be a perfect environment to get that first three points in front of the home crowd. Well, we would like that. And uh, I said, Portsmouth travel well. If the fans are you know, an excellent fan base. They've uh, similar to Charlton. have had tough tough times in, in, in recent years. But fan base has always been excellent in terms of how they've, they've gone about stuff. And they're, again... Um, a really well coached, real good side that's got good players. Um, but look, we've we're really looking forward to the challenge. We're playing at home in front of our uh, our fans, so we we want to be as as aggressive, front footed as we possibly can, and and then see if we can we can keep improving. Thanks, Nathan. Good luck, please. Rich, anything to add from you at all? Yeah, so people, in terms of your actual assessment of Portsmouth, right? from what would you, I mean, obviously they're leading the way, they've been up there as front runners, what, what, what sort of aspects of their game do you admire? Well, again, they're well coached, they've got people who can score goals, they've got a goal scorer that, that scores regularly, um, they're at the level, they've been used to the level for a, for, for a while now in terms of the players, so you look at players have been around for, for that level. You look at centre midfield people, Marlon Pack, you look at Sean Raggett, people like that that, that have been around. Ogilvy has been at Gillingham, was started at Tottenham. Was at, and the players just know what they're doing at the level. So, And again, managers come in and really, really well. Um, they, they're very well coached. So it's going to be a really tough League One game, and we know that. But it's also going to be very tough for, for Portsmouth. Well, we certainly hope so. We know that Pompey are a very good side, sitting top of the table, and we will come to them just shortly. But, Kerbs, let, let's extend the, the Alfie back in as well. You know, the fact that it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday games, it's about rotation, isn't it? Well, it is as well. And I mean, <laughs> instead of looking at the 11, we look at the bench again. Yeah. You know, because we're in a position where Chucks and the Dapo can come on. You know, so that, that puts pressure, I think, on... And, and perhaps Nathan said to him, look, give me 60 minutes, give me 65 minutes, give me everything you've got, because I know I can change it. But, you know, I'm looking at Gillespie, you know, Kamara. Once again, we're looking at, and, and I know Nathan mentioned it, we have got a top-heavy squad. TC as well. Yeah, we have got a top-heavy heavy squad with, with the players out injured as well. Um, it's, it's a squad that shouldn't be where we are. We know that, mm -hmm. and we've got to turn it around very quickly. Well, it is two changes. Uh, Tyreek Backerson in for, for Connor Coventry, Alfie in for Fred Ladapo. Connor not even in the squad after playing, and he wasn't in the squad in the last home game, so I'm not sure if, if there's picked up an injury there or, 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 or something, but it's an interesting one. In terms of that centre mid, Brownie, it, you know, there are options there. You go along with that? Yeah, I mean, the fact Connor's not on the bench would suggest he's picked up something. Um, although the game before that, when he was in the stand, there was no injury as, as far as we're led to believe. But Backinson's got good legs, we know that. He's a good box to boxer. And if you looked at the style of play last week where we were trying to press in Bolton's half, that would suggest to me that he, he wants athleticism. And I've said this before, his Luton midfield was dynamic. Mm. It, it, it could work its socks off, it could outwork the opponent's midfield nine times out of ten. And I just wonder if Backinson's in there for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I did like the way we sort of went about last week in un unsettling Bolton. Um, and, and I think if you're in that starting 11 now, it's, it's nine tenths, isn't it? Possession. And, and Backinson is in there over Coventry, who, if he's on the bench, you think, OK, it's tactical. Yeah. The fact he's not on the bench, well, we'll see. If he's not got an injury, then I'm, I am scratching my head a little bit on that one. Yeah. But um, if it's an injury, then Backinson's got, got the shirts. It's yours to keep. I agree. And Cubs, it'd be nice to keep a clean sheet, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, it would do. I think that, you know, I'm looking at Anderson, who sort of basically come from nowhere to get to get in his role. And I think that's because he's so athletic that, that Nathan fancies him there. 
But depending on the way the game goes, if, if one of them big centre forwards has to come on, then does Alfie go in at number 10 if we're chasing a goal? Mm. Because that's three people you know is going to get in the box. I think today, uh, and Brownie knows more about Portsmouth than perhaps we do, but they are a decent side. They've got great backing. It's going to be a bit of a test. So I think the first 10, 15, 20 minutes will be really important today. Yeah, 21. I mean, there's no win in the league in 15. There's no clean sheet in the league in 21. Yeah. So it, it may be 22 after today. I mean, he touched on there about having a big squad. One, do you feel there could be a bit of a cull in the summer? And two, how difficult is it for a manager to come in and try to name, nail down yeah. your, your best 11? It's difficult. When there's so many other options elsewhere. Yeah. It's, it's even more difficult when you ain't winning games. You know, because you're going home thinking, oh, I've got to make a change. I might have to make a couple of changes. Or I might have to make three. I think the fact that we put a decent performance in last week has enabled him just to make a couple. If we'd have got beat last week, you might have seen three or four or five changes because of the size of the squad. I just said to Brownie, you know, there's people like Hector and one or two others who are just out, mm. you, know, and, you know, and been playing regular. So, yeah, it does show you the size of the squad. I read something this week where... Perhaps Nathan saying, let's get through to the summer and I really do need to assess it because we've got too many players here. And you can have, you know, you hear managers saying, oh, you can never have too many players. Well, sometimes you can. Yeah, I think and, you can. and it's causing you problems at the training ground where people are disenchanted and can bring training sessions down. You know, that, that is, that, as you know, that is normal. People are fed up, they can bring your training session down. So, and then you have to act and be a great... So you don't need that. You're much better off winning. And everything, everything going along swimmingly. You need 25 Stevie Browns in the squad. <laughs> That's he, he goes out, he goes out, because he knows, he, he's, his brain's tell, he's gone back to, he's had a flashback there to a session that weren't happening. Because there was two or three not working. <laughs> he's he thinking of names there, he doesn't want to name them. Yeah. yeah, I'll have a word with him. Merv, have I seen that right? Uh, no, no, I'll go. <laughs> Keith, have I seen that right? <laughs> uh, well, oh, yeah, yeah. Merv, oh, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, look. I think there's, a, there's another side to that as well. I mean, we're, we're, it's well documented we're losing a lot of money. So the bigger squad you have, the more the finances are to look after that squad. And there's, there's got to be that in, 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 the, in the mix as well. We've got to bring that down to, you've got this triple eight they're looking at, you know, the eight championship ready and the eight and the eight. Um, and they want to go heavy on the eight championship-ready players. And if you've got players that you don't see in that, but they're commanding big wages, there has to be an element of drawing that back in so you can, you can go top-heavy on that eight at the front. So, yeah, I, I think they're all knockheads from now to the end of the season and how they can manage the finances for, for the know, summer and beyond. Thing, though, is because Nathan's come in and uh, a lot of the signings were done either by the club or previous managers, then he's got no loyalty. You know, ain't as if he said... Come and sign for me for three years, and then oh, I don't fancy it anymore. He can go in, and if, you know, hopefully in the summer he can say, well, look, I've, I've been here four or five months. I've assessed my squad. You're not in it. You're not in it. You are. You yeah. are. And I don't think the players can complain because it's not as if he's brought them in himself and give, give them contracts, and they don't fancy them. They all know they've been brought in by the other managers or people at the club. Well, he has to be ruthless without those doubt. I mean, this club, these fans deserve that, don't they? So, you know, it's all about getting back to where we feel we belong and that's at least top-end championship and, and maybe even the Premier League as well. That's a long way off at the moment, though. OK, now it is the international break for Charlton women. Their game last weekend against Reading was postponed, but they will be back at the Valley with the upcoming game against the London City Lionesses on March the 24th, which was initially set to be played at the Oakwood, but has now been moved here, which means that the Addicts have three big matches at the Valley to end the season. That's against the London City Lionesses, then Birmingham City visit here on March the 31st, before a potential thrilling season finale against Southampton on Sunday, April the 28th. And Curbs, three big games mm. at the Valley. That is huge in itself. And you've been one of many calling for, for them to be playing here. Yeah, yeah, I just hope that by the time we get to that Southampton game, it's done. Because obviously they're up there as well. Um, yeah, no, I, I see. I, I, I had a, we had a league managers thing the other day, and we was talking about it. You know, about the women's football. I mean, the international game last night. The crowds are, are being attracted to, mm. to the women's football, and because the stadiums and, and the surfaces are so good, that can't be an excuse that you're damaging the pitch. We can't have too many games on. I think the big thing is opening up the stadium. The, the finance of opening up the stadium when you ain't got a big crowd coming yeah. in. But what's happening now at Arsenal and Tottenham and one or two other places, 
it's quite incredible, you know, it's selling out. So hopefully we can start getting some fans here and they can play regular. Because mm. I don't think it's a, it's not a pitch thing, it's a financial thing. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. And Brownie, the Charlton mm. women are now fourth, but with the game in hand on first as yeah. well, we're one point ahead. It is all set up to be a thrilling end it, of the season. It, it could go down to that Southampton game it, as well, couldn't it? Yeah, it really is. And I wonder if the record here that the, the women's side have is a reason for putting those last three on. Because their record here is particularly strong. So I wonder if that's got something to do with it. Because, you know, you want all the help you can get, don't you, coming into a final mm. stretch. Whatever makes that little bit of difference in the mentality of the team or the approach to the game. But, yeah, I, I, I'm with curves on this. I think the more you can get the games here, the better. Uh, our groundsman won't thank us for that, I'm sure. But... I, mean, I, I remember, you know, when, yeah. when, yeah, 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 yeah. when we first came back in, we couldn't play reserve games here, and we was playing at Welling and whatever. Sen Siro. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what was happening was... You know, young players like yourselves, when you got a chance to play for the first team, make your debut, it's the first time you played at the Valley. Yeah. It was quite incredible, wasn't it? Because yeah, yeah, all yeah. the games you played would have been uh, at Welling. Yeah. Uh, or, well, or I'm, I'm that old, we were at Sellers Park, but, you know, yeah. anyway. But no, absolutely, you're getting used to that experience. It's the same for women, it's the same for the, the men's uh, boys coming through as well. OK, well, look, with so many games here at the Valley, and make sure you get the club's ticketing website on now to purchase your tickets and play a big part in helping the Charlton women's side get up to the WSL. OK, as part of Men's Health Day at the Valley today, let's take a look at the Community Trust walking football sessions. Uh, Addicts goalkeeper Ashley Maynard Brewer went and visited one of the sessions recently to find out what it's all about. I've come down to join in with some walking football. Uh, yeah, let's check it out. Sport is a big influence in people involvement and we all know what you know the physical and well-being of what sport does it's important more socially as well to be sort of involved in football because you can lose friends etc partners so you, yeah it's, it's more socially i would say important it's been good fun uh all the old blokes seem engaged and look like they're having a good time so it's been good to come and check it out tracy just uh subbed in for me and she's getting right amongst it Speaking to a few of them is uh, something they look forward to during the week. They can get out, yeah, see their mates, have a chat, play some football and yeah, have a good time. A really good afternoon. Great to play with Ash, obviously. And no, the walking football is a really important part of all of our lives. It's great. It gets you fitter and we play twice a week in one guise or another. And there is gets you fitter than jogging or anything like that because you're on the move all the time. Also, most importantly, you meet loads of different people who, who like football and we have a tea afterwards a lot of the time on a Tuesday and it's wonderful. You feel really included in a group which sometimes when you finish work and things like that you miss that size of life and it's lovely. Really enjoy it. Tell you what, there's a great turn and finish there on one of those, wasn't there? Anyone you can think of, Kurz, back in the day who would be good for walking football? <laughs> Some of the players I signed, I would have thought. <laughs> Once you got them in the building, you think, oh no, they ain't what I thought. <laughs> I got asked to play at half time today by uh, one of the media team, and I said, oh, I can't do it, and these are no good. And he basically went, well, it's walking football. So I had to give him a little bit of a dig. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to stick my knees in your body, mate, and you wouldn't be playing walking football either. But the truth is, it's a sad reflection that you... Whatever happened to the football golf? I loved football golf. I, I love we, was, that. we got invited somewhere and we never did it, did we? What happened? Oh, what that, that no, Steve that's, that's Steve Crane. Steve no, that's, he's Dubai. just done it again. He's yeah. just had his second one over in oh, Saudi Arabia. Right. Yeah. No, we kind of... I don't know. Do you know what happened there? We, we said sort of, it sort of petered out yeah. and they paid an absolute fortune for a squad of uh, Italian internationals to go over. Uh, yeah, like... Way better than us. <laughs> I mean, yourself. it was worth Paolo the money. Maldini went yeah, there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was worth it's the money. It's amazing how we've gone from walking football to. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, no, it's just crossed my walking. mind that, you know, we'd like a game of golf, but. You know, I, th I thought football. you meant the football golf around a training round. Remember when you all used yeah, to make up a hole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I would say, though, I mean, Kerbs walked his way through games, didn't he? I'm just. It, like, now, I mean this with the greatest respect. I'm going to compare you to someone and don't laugh. Don't say Wilkins. No. Well, actually, yeah, not bad, actually, but Jan Mulby. Yeah, Mulby. Not in terms of yeah, size. Right. Didn't well, get out of the centre circle, but just control let games with no, one-two no, touch. This, this big match we visited, which is on, there was, there was a game on yesterday, and, um, you know, uh, Brian Moore and... and uh, who's the commentator? Well, who's the 
in the studio. Not Brian Moore, but they had a, a comment. Anyway, the game was um, West Ham and uh, QPR. And, uh, you know, uh, we are quite critical of possession-based football, but that's what I did. Yeah. I got it and give it and got it and give it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and... Uh, You'd be brilliant in the modern day. I should be all right now. now. Absolutely. You know? Because like, when, grand a week. When, they do the stat, when they do the stats and they go uh, pass um, ratio and successful passes, I'll be worth a fortune. That's right. I won't be going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the ball won't be going so, anywhere. You need to be a certain age to remember curves. <laughs> I am. Brownie, you didn't actually yeah. play with curves, did you? I don't think. But you uh, no, it was just, right. yeah, just on the transition yeah. between playing and yeah. managing, yeah. yeah. OK, well, uh, walking football aimed at men aged 50 plus. That is definitely us and put on by Charlton Athletic Community Trust. Walking football is a non-contact version which helps to maintain a, a healthy lifestyle, also creating a social atmosphere that men from all walks of life can enjoy. And whether you've played and uh, never played before, played when you were younger, or had to stop due to an injury, I said, it's a bit like you, all of those, Brownie. No, tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Walking, <laughs> walking football <laughs> is a great way to get involved. It takes place at Eltham Goals on Tuesday mornings between 10.30 and 11.30 a.m. Footscray Rugby Club on Thursday evenings between 6 and 7 p.m. Priced at £4 per session or £15 of the month and you can just turn up and pay on the day. Or you can email Matt Phillips at matt.phillips with two L's at cact.org.uk to book a place. OK, back to today now, and uh, let's have a look at the fixtures, shall we, in Sky Bet League One. Obviously, some crucial ones, top and bottom. The Barnsley welcome Derby to the Oakwell, a huge game in the promotion race as fourth play second. Blackpool, who sit six points outside the playoffs, host third place Bolton. We'll be desperate for Lincoln to beat Port Vale. Vale could put us in the relegation zone if they win and we lose. But a win today could see us overtake Shrewsbury, who travelled to an informed Reading side, who have claimed three wins in the last five. Early today, Cambridge lost 1-0 to Peterborough, while, as we said last night, Cheltenham drew 1-1 at Wigan. And Curbs, some massive games there, aren't there? Are we all sort of Lincoln and Reading fans for the weekend, <laughs> as well as Charlton? Yeah, I mean, you do hear, don't you, that you know, we've got to take care of ourselves, but in half help when someone else does you a favour. And, uh, you know... We, I'm sure we're going to need a couple of them along the way between now and the end of the season. Yeah, but when you think about it, that, that uh, Port Vale have got games in hand than us, you know, we need to try and get away as much as yeah. possible. And, and Brownlee, Derby travel to, to Barnsley this weekend. We travel to Pride Park, of course, on, yeah. on Tuesday evening. Just how much of it would a win today do in terms of momentum of what is... To play three games back to back to back against the top three is a very difficult yeah. run, isn't it? And we identified that leading up to them, didn't we? Saying how difficult it would be, but we, we it was more the performance last week. Led twice away at a, at a side that's, you know, spoken about as the best team in the league. Whether it wins the league or not is is a different matter. But you, you pop into this game, I think this team's even better. I, I, I've looked at the clips. The front four of Portsmouth are strong, physical goals from all across it. It's not like they're, they're reliant on one player, they're not. They've got goals deep in their squad. The two midfielders back them up as well. This is a tough, tough game. And then you flip that over, speak about the goal scoring, more clean sheets than anybody else. They've got the most points coming back from behind. I think 21 points from losing positions. This is a really good side. Um, and like I said right at the start of the show, clinging to the head-to-head -head here, yeah. you know, really am. But, but what I would say is you have to come in as a Charlton fan, as a Charlton player, and Nathan, positive, buoyed by last week's performance because it did kind of come out of nowhere. We weren't expecting a point last week and we led twice and I thought there was a different attitude towards the performance. It was a different style of play, slight tweak. See if that's the same today. You know you said we want to cling to the head-to-head. -head. Yeah. Do you want to know what the head-to-head -head is? I'd love to know what the head-to-head is. It's, I know it's really good. OK. Well, we've played Portsmouth on 113 previous occasions. We've won 40. Oh. Portsmouth have won 44. Right, now do the last 29 uh, now draws. Now do, do since 92. Well, because <laughs> I think I, they've won four in 24. Yeah. yeah. I, they, it's now, yeah. Something but, like that. You know, we, I think it, well, it goes to show, doesn't it, you know, how since 92, yeah. you know, we've, we've gone on and done really well. And again, is, that, is, that, is there any way in the steep psyche of us coming back home, playing Portsmouth, winning that game, then suddenly each time as we've played Portsmouth... No, I don't think so, but I just think today... I'm looking at their support, and I think Portsmouth's support demand from the players a performance. They know that they get supported very well, and we've got to go out and give a game. 
I'm hoping we respond to that yeah. and, and, and match them. Uh, if we don't, it could be a long afternoon. But I just got a feeling today that, you know, we're up for it. And as I said, the atmosphere makes a big difference to the players. So let's hope we can respond. And uh, and I think I think Nathan might be getting a bit of stick being an old Southampton manager. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, what I'm hearing from that at the moment already. Yeah, I well, they they are here in force, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, oh, they're after it. They're after Nathan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be full as well. I mean, it'll be sold out. And it's like Curb says, what you need is a nice high tempo start from us. Mm. That'll lift our crowd. And then I think we'll have. I mean, we have been getting better atmospheres inside the valley recently. Yeah? But if, if we if we start well, I think that's going to be a I, proper one. We have been asking our fans to really, you know, give the players a lift. And I think they've got to respond as well. Yeah. You know, like we're talking because, about. No, as you say, they, they've sold out here. Yeah. They will bring, you know, their their, their voice. They're making so a racket already. They're making well, a racket already. Yeah. You know, and we're talking about the players responding. Can the fans respond? Yeah. Um, three wins and two draws since we played them. So no defeats there, obviously. What do you put that down to? Yeah, I mean... What, for... Sorry, can you say it again? Yeah, last five times we've played them, we've won right. three and drawn twice. Sorry. So yeah. even if they had been above us in the table... Yeah, well, the 2-2 two is a prime example of that. Didn't expect anything mm. in Fratton Park. I think they, they started the season really, really well on the front foot and, and we, we were expecting to go there a bit like last Saturday and not come away with anything. And, and I think it was a McGrandall's goal, which is rare in a hen's teeth. So, you know, and we still managed to pick up a 2-2 at Fratton Park. And that's what I mean about this fixture. Wasn't expecting anything at all out of that one and, and managed to grab something. And I actually think the way it's positioned today, that, that, that you know, Nathan can go, right, he can show a clip of Lincoln, he can show a clip up at Bolton, you know, and then address the goals against. And, and we're all, I think we're already a different side under Nathan than we were under Michael. And there's, there's a, we're a different proposition. Whether that's good enough to break down this Portsmouth side, which is pretty decent, you know, they're getting themselves in such good positions in games. Three goal lead, four goal lead. And can see, they've, they have conceded three set pieces in the last three games, but they've been comfortably winning at that point. So this is, this is, this is a tough one. You know, there are away records, the best in the league. You know, and most clean sheets. It's all those statistics where you go, oh, good, all good, all good. But I think we're in a much better place. And there is the danger, isn't there, Curbs? I've spoken to a few fans coming in. I, I did the... The PSA testing as well, so we'll see how that goes. That, that's been going on today. Um, they, they feel confident because we're playing Portsmouth. <laughs> and the three points are in the back, but you yeah. only have to look at the table to tell you yeah. the yeah, gap yeah. between yeah. the two. It's not as simple as that. No, no, as I said, I think the start's going to be really important. It was interesting the last couple of games where we've tended to go long early on into the channels, turn people around. And I think with Alfie up there today, um, there will be a little bit of scurrying around and perhaps unsettle Portsmouth a bit. But I'm with that, I'm with Brandy, that midfield, that midfield area. You know, we've got some legs in there, got some experience in there. That's where I think the game's going to be won or lost in the middle of the park. Yeah, but well, we haven't got someone who just sits in the centre circle and plays two touches. Sideways on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, just a reminder for the O's, uh, those watching on YouTube and Twitter as well to get your live streaming match pass for just £10 to be able to watch Charlton TV's multi-production camera angles of today's game. Now, it was a, a very impressive debut for Thierry Small last Saturday, not just for getting on the score sheets, but he spoke to Charlton TV this week. It was a really good game to be involved in for my debut. You know, it was a great game, end to end for yourself. But the fans were, you know, that they had the hearts on the sleeve, do you know what I mean? But, you know, they're the games that you want to be involved in, the big games. and. You know, but I'm glad that the team we managed to get a point from the from the game because it was a much needed point for us. The good goal, uh, I didn't mean it. You know, uh, I put the ball in a nice area. I thought Freddie, you know, got a touch on it to be fair initially. Um, but obviously, if you put the ball in a dangerous area, the keeper was a bit confused, and you know, I was grateful that it went in the back of the net. So just keep on building on and keep on, you know, hopefully get more, you know, assists, and goals, and stuff like that. I found the game good. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, was, uh, we had to defend a lot, but I thought we we done well. It was a good game to be a part of, and good that we got the point that we needed. Any time I play on the pitch for this club, to put my all into it, and the fans are definitely going to see passion and that hunger. I worked with the manager at Southampton a little bit. He was he was really good. He's he's really intense, 
and he gets a lot out of his players. So, you know, that's one thing that I was going to expect when he was coming in was that intensity and, you know, that discipline and that hard work, and which I love to do anyway as a player. So, you know, with him being here, it's great because the standards are going to lift and the lads are really going to, you know, we're going to really push on and try and get what we need out of the games. And the lads are great, you know, it's a really good changing room. So it's, it's been easy settling in. So you're in London, lads are sound. So it's been, it's been really good. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be a really good game and hopefully we can get the points that we need and um, put up a good show for the fans. So hopefully, you know, it can be a really good day on the Saturday. Always want to be, you know, playing against the best sides and, you know, we're, we're good enough to go there and get three points and win the game so let's let's see what happens we're optimistic and we've been working hard and grafting on the training pitch but of course they're the games that you want to be a part of and playing in so hopefully you know we can deliver on the game on game day we were unfortunate not to get the full three points at bolton the lads played well you know uh, the manager's been drilling us the whole week on our structure and our shape and you know it's really good just to get that discipline and that cohesion between each other you know so we can play you know good football so it's definitely an optimistic on Saturday an optimistic day so we can definitely where everyone's on it we can get the three points so hopefully that's what it brings. Well, Brownie, an attacking left-sided defender who contributes goals and assists. Now, I promise you I didn't write this. Does he remind you of a former Charlton, Chelsea and Benfica player? Oh, I tell you, if he does, he's, he's, he's going to go a long way, he's isn't struggling. he? struggling. He's going to go a long way, isn't he? Because he's going to jump up at a couple of divisions, go abroad in the top league. Yeah. No, look, he, but he speaks well, doesn't he? And, and, he, and he made an impressive debut and he impressed last, week. last week. Yeah, and, and, and I think we addressed this last week. It's one thing on your debut when your adrenaline's pumping and you know you're away at Bolton, where the expectation level's probably not as high. Um, it, I'm not worried about the first couple of performances when a new player comes in. It's when they've settled down, and we've seen players get swamped this year. They've started well, and we've gone, "Whoa, like him, like him." And then five, ten games in, when the pressure's hitting you, because we haven't got a result, the crowd's a bit negative. It's the character that you want to see after that point. And um, you, you know, but everything that we saw last week, you know, you know, was was very good going forward. Always got a question mark. You know, let's see a bit more of him defensively before we assess that. But yeah, um, a very good debut, um, and he should be in a cracking game here. So I think again, the adrenaline kicks in. Should be a good performance again today. It's, it's when it all settles down and it's those, those games, that, the six-point games we've got coming up. That's when we need everybody to be absolutely at it. And there's plenty of those as well. I mean, he yeah. spoke very positively about Nathan Jones and you touched on the fact that Nathan wouldn't have known many of the players, but to be fair, obviously he knows him as well and, and that would yeah. have helped from the time at Southampton. Yeah. And he can get the message through to the other players. You know, this is what he's like. He don't like this, he don't like that. You know, and, and, and sort of educate the squad about their new manager and you know what, he's, what he accepts and what he doesn't accept mm. before you cross the line yourself. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just looking at the, the, the monitor and the people behind you. and We haven't seen a, a stadium this full for some time. No, we? no, it's good. And, and as I yeah. say, we respond to it because, as you know, playing in front of a decent crowd, the atmosphere is totally different to an half-empty stadium when it's flat and you, you, know, and you can hear everything, every groan. Every moan, hear the manager shouting at you and whistling. <laughs> no one wants to hear that as a player. And obviously this will be more filled up, they're just finishing off their last minute pints as well. But it, it yeah. does make a big difference a game like this, Brownie, doesn't it, in yeah. terms of atmosphere? Yeah, you can feel it as soon as you come you out the doors. Now, you? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, can, you open definitely. the doors to the dressing room and you know, you know that, that five minutes before kickoff is, you know, you're absolutely buzzing to get out there. And as you open that door and you start walking down, you see the opposition and then you hear what's outside. Mm. When it's well, flat, it's like did, you go out a bit flat. I did hear Tony Gale, you know, ex-West Ham and Fulham and whatever, he, did, he does tell us a funny story when he does his uh, after dinner and that, talking about Charlton. He said, I used to hate playing, getting in the ground, getting, he said it was really difficult. He said, and then you're in that tunnel and you can hear the crowd and you know you're in for a right hard game. He said, and as you run out, they play the Red Red Robin. <laughs> he said, and you think, oh, I ain't bad now. <laughs> so every time he tells a story, I go, yeah. but how did you get on? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. did you win? Yeah. Did you win? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps not the most ferocious song, but it's yeah. still it, it's our song. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the the lineups, uh, shall we, of today's games. And 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 you mentioned Portsmouth, of course. They yeah. are very very strong. And obviously they have got the likes of Colby Bishop, 16 goals. Paddy Lane, 
double figures with 11, and that's just in the league. Yeah, and they've got a very tricky winger on loan called Camaro, who's left-footed, comes off the right-hand side, scored a wonderful goal cutting in a couple of weeks back, uh, curled it into the opposite top corner. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Lang as well, who plays off the striker, he's contributed with five goals. So they've got, got and he goes even deeper than that, Pack and... And uh, Moxon have also contributed, and Shaughnessy, the centre half. You know, we've been saying about centre half contributing. Shaughnessy's contributed three, three goals and two assists. So they go quite deep in terms of who can, who can get themselves on the score sheet. But it's about that front four, Scotty. Uh, you know, I, I didn't see brilliant football. You know, in terms of breaking the lines and 25 passes. But what I did see was a real energy, a real physicality, and a passion to want to get onto the score sheet from from the clips that I saw. So, you know, the statistics all lead to to a tough day for us, but I'm, I, am, I am positive. Mm. Say 